Good morning, everyone. Please stand. Welcome to Solid Rock Bible Church. It's great to have you in the Lord's house today to worship together. Would you pray with me before we get started? Uh, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we uh, are so thankful for your grace and your mercy and your love on us. And uh, we just come before you. We, we turn our hearts to you and worship this morning. And we just ask that you be magnified in our lives, in our praises, in our voices this morning. Um, may we May we leave changed by your grace, by your love. In Jesus' name, amen.
Join with me in prayer. Lord God, thank you for the opportunity to just be here today in, in your house and worshiping you. And Lord, I pray uh, that today would be a day we connect with you, that we'd grow in your word, that we'd uh, be with you in worship, and Lord, that we'd leave this place knowing more about you than when we walked in. So God, would you lead our hearts today? Would you direct us? Would you be with our, our time in the word, God? Would you draw us closer to yourself today? We pray these things in your name. Amen. Y'all can be seated. Thanks so much for joining us today at Solid Rock. It is good to see you all here today. Uh, shout out, I see the the Abel's twins in the back row there. Uh, I can't believe that Danielle's here already uh, with her uh, newborn twins there. So it is uh, good to see uh, you all here. Uh, babies are being passed around. Um it is, it is good uh, to just be in the house of the Lord today, though. If you're new with us, welcome. 
We're, we're so glad you're here. Uh, if you've never filled out a connection card with us, whether this is your first time or your fifth time, uh, if you would do that, it's our chance to connect with you uh, so we can let you know a little bit more about who we are and tell you how you can get better plugged in. If you came prepared to give today, thank you. Uh, there are some boxes in the back that you can uh, drop those gifts in, or you can also uh, go right online and give on our church app. Well, as we are getting ready uh, for the fall, there's like 78 announcements. Uh, and so Kevin gave them to me written on the back of a CVS receipt. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the best we can today to get through. We, we need to let you know what's going on here, though. Uh, next Sunday, next Sunday, uh, you need to be here by 1030, okay? And I know that's really early for some of y'all, okay? Um, so 1030, because we're going to be out on the lawn uh, once a year. Uh, we come together, uh, bring a lawn chair, bring a blanket, whatever, how you want your family to, uh, to sit out there on the lawn uh, and prepare, be prepared to worship outdoors with us. We're going to celebrate uh, together in baptism. Some of you all are going to get to meet some people you've never met before. It's called the 930 service people, and they're really kind. Uh, you're going to enjoy getting to meet them, um, and, and we're going to just have a great time of connection. Two things about that service, though. If you uh, are still interested in being baptized, um, we would love to have you join us in that. Uh, you could you could send a message into us at the church, but uh, easier is just talk to me or Kevin today. Uh, say, hey, I really want to get baptized, and so uh, so we can get you connected and make sure that we get you the information you need so you can join us that day. Also, though, if you uh, want to have lunch with us, we're going to have our Lee's Chicken Lunch that we do every year, but we have to pre-order those. Uh, and so uh, if you haven't done that yet, you can uh, scan that code. You can That code will be up after the service as well. It's in your uh, mailer that's gone out in the email every week. Um, we just need to get those signed up and paid for. You can pay right on the app again uh, for that meal. So however many you want to buy for your family, uh, it's always just a really simple way to just stay, hang out, connect with other families and we have a great time together. So next Sunday, 1030, make sure you're here uh, as we are planning on a great, great day. Also, uh, as, as fall is right around the corner, that means we're starting up with our Awana once again. And in our Awana ministry, uh, we're excited for that. Uh, we're excited for people who've already registered. If you haven't registered your kids yet, you can do that right downstairs. There's some forms right next to the, the child kiosk. You can also do that online as well. Uh, but we need to start making plans for who's going to be a part of Awana this year. Uh, last year we had a wait list, uh, but we want to make sure we get all our church family signed up first. Also, if you're interested in volunteering for that, you can do that right online as well. Sign up, get registered. If you haven't talked to myself or Becky yet, uh, let us know that you're planning on being a part of that so we can get you the proper training materials as well. Well, we are, uh, last spring, we kicked off some adult education classes uh, that we did, which were uh, a huge success, and we're, we're doing that again this fall. There's two separate classes that are going to be on Monday night, starting September 11th. The first one is Consider This. It is a class uh, talking about current world events, things that are happening in our culture that are, that sometimes we wonder, man, how do I respond to this as a believer in Jesus Christ? Uh, developing a biblical worldview in, in a, this crazy world we live in. So they're going to be hitting some really tough topics, and so that's going to be a five-week study starting September 11th. And then right after that is going to be a class called Who is God? Um, and so we're, we're excited about both of those. They're just deep dives into issues of theology and life. Uh, last spring, we had a, a huge participation in those, and we're anticipating the same this fall. So you need to sign up for those classes so that we know that you are coming. So make sure you can do that. Last thing is uh, starting after the service today, after today's service, we're going to be uh, tearing down all this stuff from the stage. It's our last week in the AHA series, but everything is coming off the stage because we're actually doing uh, a, a work project that starts tomorrow night. We're going to be tearing down the back wall, uh, doing some much needed renovation back here on the stage. And so we're, we're looking for additional helpers. If you're available tomorrow or Tuesday evening specifically, when we're going to be tearing all this down. Uh, we're going to need people who jump in to serve. Uh, even if you're like, man, I don't have any skills, but I can, I can carry stuff from one spot to another. We need some of those people because everything's going to be torn off. This wall's going to come down. It's going to go right through this door. Some of y'all didn't even know this door went somewhere. It goes somewhere. And you can find out tomorrow night at 5 o'clock. Okay? Um, we're going to be hauling buckets of stuff out. Uh, we could just use help. Uh, if, if you want to help more with the, the building end of things, you can help with that as well. You talked again after the service to Kevin. Uh, Jake Scudder is right here. He's going to help uh, head up the building end of that. Uh, just let us know. Say, hey, I, I can be here. Here's when I can be here. Um, and, and we would love your help with that. 
Well, today we conclude our summer in the book of Colossians. Aha. Well, good morning. good morning. Have you enjoyed this AHA series this summer? Yes. It's been a great series. I have learned so much from the teaching team as they've just taught every week about these, uh, these nuggets of gold that we're able to take away from the book of Colossians. It's been great for me. Hope the same for you. Today, we're going to kind of conclude the whole thing. And uh, what we've been talking about every week is this is the purpose of this AHA series is moments of sudden insight and discovery. So we've kind of taken away an aha moment every week, and so the purpose of today is to, to just kind of tie a pretty bow on the whole thing, kind of talk about what we've, we've been learning. So I want to take us back to what Pastor Brad kind of laid out at the very beginning of this, and so I want to kind of give us a review so we're all caught up on the same page. This might be your first week in the series, not a problem at all, but here's what we talked about. My new life in Jesus affects my equilibrium, my hearing and my doing. My new life in Jesus affects my seeing, maturity, endurance, and growth. My new life in Jesus changes me, how I see, think, feel, and act towards myself. And my new life in Jesus impacts others. Now, let me break it down even more for us. Because in the midst of all these things, we had even greater things we talked about. So first, my new life in Jesus affects my equilibrium, hearing and doing. This is where Pastor Brad laid out our vision. Talked about who we are as a church and what our vision is to reach people for Christ. And then he talked about hear it and do it as we looked at the first uh, chapter there. Then our second part was my new life in Jesus affects my seeing, maturity, endurance, and growth. This is where we've talked about our first of our three values, the first one being love God completely. And we spent about four weeks talking through the rest of chapter one and two, talking about see it, fill up, built up, and grow up. We moved on to the third area. Third area, if I can get my notes back here, is my new life in Jesus changes me how I see, think, feel, and act towards myself. We looked at our second value, that we could love yourself correctly. We spent about three weeks talking about mindset and heart change in the new you. And then just recently over the past two weeks and then concluding today, my new life in Jesus impacts others. We're talking about our third value of loving all people compassionately. And Pastor Brad talked about our new community. And last week talked about our new home. And today we're going to talk about our new world. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to chapter 4 and talk about this. Now, I wanted to spend a lot of time on the whole chapter. If uh, How many of you remember back in the day before email when we actually wrote letters? Remember that? We actually wrote them on, okay? And at the end of a letter, when we forgot something, we would put P.S. and add it, and then we'd go P.S.S. and add it, and then P.S.S. and add it. That's what Paul does in the rest of chapter 4. He thanks all the people who are encouraging him because he's in prison right now. And he thanks all of his helpers. He encourages them. And then he ends the book by saying, grace be to you. But we're going to go back to the beginning of it and focus on just that part of how this impacts our world. And here's what the Bible says in Colossians chapter 4, verses 2 through 6. Continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. At the same time, pray also for us that God may open to us a door for the word to declare the mystery of Christ, on account of which I am in prison, that I might make it clear which is how I ought to speak. Walk in wisdom toward outsiders, making the best use of the time. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that ye may know how you ought to answer every person. Father, we thank you so much for this incredible series. We thank you for these aha moments we've talked about, of these sudden moments of insight and discovery. Father, today as we conclude this book and conclude this series, I pray that you would help us to be challenged by your word today. Father, I, I truly pray that the way that we came in today will not be the same way that we leave. May you challenge us with just one more nugget that we can take and apply to our life, especially has to do with impacting our world for Jesus. Father, thank you so much for our church family. Thanks for those who are here today, either live or watching on stream today. We pray that you would bless our lives as we open up your word and we dive into what you have to say. In your name I pray, amen. Well, we use a lot of sports illustrations here at Solid Rock. 
Why? Because we love sports. We especially love soccer. <laughs> and a couple of us. And we like baseball, too. We like basketball. We like football. We use all kinds of illustrations. But if you are familiar with sports at all, you have heard this phrase, impact player. Impact player. You'll hear about how a team is good because they have an impact player, impact players. You'll hear about teams that could have won a championship, but they were short an impact player. You hear about this person's going to become an impact player. Impact players are so important to sports, to teams. Now, I had the privilege of playing a number of sports in high school. I played soccer, basketball, baseball, and then in college, I played soccer and baseball and had a, had a joy over the rest of my life to just coach and referee. And I love investing in kids. I love investing in their lives, and I tell every one of them, you are an impact player for Christ. You are an impact player. No matter what you're doing, you are an impact player. You can be. Don't think you're going to be. You are an impact player if you want to be. What is an impact player? It's one who makes a difference. It's one that's very important to the team. It's one that makes everyone else on the team a little bit better just by being an impact player. But I think sports is a microcosm of life and society. And here's why. As I invested in my own two sons and every kid that I coached through the years, we talk about discipline, talk about teamwork, talk about how important communication is, how, how important problem solving is. We talk about how important desire is and determination is. We talk about simply how important it is just to show up sometimes. And all these things will help us be impact players in our life. I want you to participate with me here, all right? So as you think about the sports world, who are some impact players out there? So just, here's what I want you to, I want you to just raise your hand real quick so we don't get everybody talking at one time, and then I want you to give me the sport and the person. So who's going to start? Who's an impact player? Yes. Bill Russell. What sport was that, sir? Basketball. For those who don't remember, Google Bill Russell. You'll learn a lot, all right? He's an amazing basketball player. Who else? Tom Brady. What sport was that? <laughs> the other football, okay? Tom Brady, who else? Lionel Messi. Lionel Messi. Did you watch the game last night? A oh, great game last night, okay? Some of you guys are going, Lionel Messi? What game was last night? Don't worry about it. Google that too, all right? But all these are impact players. Why? Because they make a difference. They make everybody else on the team just a little bit better. During my time with my kids, I always told them that I want you to be culture changers, Change the culture on your team because you know what? You're only going to play sports for so long. Then you're going to be able to impact your family and your work and your, and your friends with what you learn in this microcosm of sports. Here at Solid Rock, our vision is to grow people, to reach people. You know that. You've heard that so many times. In order for us to fulfill that vision, every one of us must make the decision that we are going to impact people for Christ. It's what I call within my circles of influence. All of us have different circles of influence. I have my work influence. I have my neighborhood influence. I have my sports influence. I have my referee influence. I have just my community involvement influence. We all have circles of influence where we impact people in our lives. Over the course of this past year, we have seen incredible things happen at Solid Rock. Salvations in our Awana ministry, in our kids' ministry, in our student ministries. Baptisms. We had a great time during our winter baptism indoor. You don't want to miss next week. We're going to have four people are scheduled to get baptized from youth to teenagers to adults. We're going to celebrate those things together. Involvement in community groups, involvement in growth groups, involvement in our discipleship classes and our Bible studies, serving in areas like guest services, in Awana, in kids' ministry, worship arts, people serving, people giving of their time, their talents, and their treasures. We talk about all these things, and as we grow people to reach people, I want to ask you a question. Do you know someone within your own circle of influence who has not made the decision to follow Jesus Christ yet? I want you to think about that person for the remainder of our time. Do you know somebody within your circle of influence who has not made the decision to cross that line of faith and put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ? Think about that person as we go on. This might be a friend. This might be a family member. This might be a coworker. It might be a neighbor. I don't know what part it plays in your life. I think we all know this, but there are so many lonely people in the world today. 
There are so many hurting people in this world today. There are so many people who have no purpose to live. There's no meaning, no direction in life. There are people who are dying every day. And they had had to make a decision in a previous time whether they're going to go to heaven or they're going to spend an eternity in hell. This is real. We are impact players for the kingdom of God. Are you willing to be an impact player? We have so many new opportunities before us right now. For those of you who are uh, still in the school phase, whether you're a student here today, whether you're a parent, whether you're a teacher, whether you're a coach, whether you're a maintenance person, a bus driver, a crossing guard, I don't care what you do. There are new opportunities before us in just a couple of weeks that they haven't already started to impact people for Christ within that circle of influence of our school. What are you going to do about that? Sports have started. High school sports are already going. Games are already being played. Club sports, year-round sports, seasonal sports, all these opportunities that God brings in our circles of influence to make a difference for him. Besides school and sports, think of all the other extracurricular activities that we involve ourselves with at any given day, any given week, any given month. There's new opportunities to make an impact for Christ. So I know how intimidating it can be um, to talk to people about Jesus Christ. I, I understand that. And I want you to know when I talk about solid rock and all the, the great decisions that are being made spiritually, whether it's salvations or baptisms or people serving or people in groups, those are not just numbers that we throw out there and we, we put on a spreadsheet and we just go, oh, yeah, 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 that, that's great. Let's, let's do better next year. Yeah, that's part of it, but here's why. Because every number has a name and every name has a story and every story matters to Solid Rock Bible Church. That's why. It's not about just having a number, but that number has a name. And that name has a story. And as we get to know people, we hear those stories, and we realize how much they matter to us. But as we think about impacting this world for Christ, I want you to think about maybe some of the intimidation factors that you have in your life. Things like, what do I say to them? How do I say it to them? What if they react negatively to my confronting them with the gospel of Christ? I get all that. Those are all good points. I want to try today to take away some of those intimidation factors and get them out of the equation so you can understand that you are an impact player for Jesus Christ and you are on God's team and we can make an impact in this world within our circles of influence. Impact players are never afraid to step up to the plate. Never. When I was in high school um, and even in college, um, I loved pressure. And I still to this day, I love pressure. I, I just love pressure. Um, I've been able to hire scores of people over the years, whether the marketplace or ministry. And I always say this in the interview process. If you are not a high-capacity, high-performing person, we're probably not going to work together very well. Because everything about life is just, you've got to be high-capacity, high-performing to get things done. So let's go and make an impact together as we do these things. And so... When I was in high school, um, I wanted to be the soccer player that kind of stepped up with three minutes left in the game to do the penalty kick when the score was tied. That's the pressure I wanted. I wanted to be the guy in basketball when there were five seconds left in the game and we were down by one, put the ball in my hands, let me drive to the hoop. I want to draw that foul and I want to go shoot two. Baseball, I was the guy that, hey, it's bottom of the ninth, bottom of the seventh in high school. There's a player on second. There's two outs. I want the bat in my hand. I love that pressure because you know what? My parents raised me to be an impact player. I wanted to make a difference. I wanted to, to better the people that were around me. And when we look about the cause of Christ, are we the same way? Do we want that pressure because we realize that, you know what? We probably don't have much time left here on earth. And I know every generation since my great-grandparents and my grandparents and my parents have been telling us that, that you know what? Well, the end times are near. But may I tell us the end times are near? There's going to come a day when Jesus is going to come. It's coming. Are we ready? Are you ready? And who do we want to take with us? Are you willing to step up to that plate with your family and friends who don't know who Jesus is? Well, here's today's truth. You are an impact player. You are. You're an impact player for the kingdom of God. Not can I be, should I be. No, you are. You are an impact player. 
You have been saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. You have the equipment to go through the word of God and to take the message of salvation to other people. We need to proclaim that. Remember, we're looking at this part of our study about our new life in Jesus impacts others. So how can we impact others for the cause of Christ? Let's talk about three ways we can do this. First of all, we can impact our world for Jesus with our prayers. Verses two through four, let me read it again. It says, continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. At the same time, pray also for us that God may open to us a door for the word to declare the mystery of Christ on account of which I am in prison, that I may make it clear which is how I ought to speak. I'm gonna take four things out of this passage. The first one is we are to be devoted to prayer. We're to be devoted to prayer. This word continue steadfastly means to be devoted to prayer. It carries the idea of a tug of war. Has anybody ever been involved in a tug of war before? Okay, whether it's elementary school or when it was, we used to do it at summer camp. We would have, you know, 25 guys on this side, 25 guys on this side. We would kind of compete church against church, so to speak. And uh, man, you, you would be supporting your, your people that had that tug of war. And now in the middle, there was a big old pit of mud and water. All right? <laughs> So there was something. So if you were the first or second or third guy, you really don't want to lose it all, all right? But now never forget, I mean, you got that rope. You're digging your heels in, you're, and you're yelling encouragement to your, to, your, to your teammates. Pull, pull, and they're just pulling and pulling and pulling. That's the same idea that this passage is talking about when it says, be devoted, continue steadfastly. In other words, don't let go of this strong, consistent relationship in your communication with Christ. Think about that. Don't let go. Keep pulling. It also means to keep at it no matter what happens or doesn't happen. I don't know if your prayer life is my, like my prayer life, but I, I kind of want God to answer all of my prayers <laughs> in my time. <laughs> and sometimes God just says, I got this. And he might not answer the way that I want it to be answered. He might just say, hey, wait. Not always how I want it to be done. But it's, it's, this is the sense of giving constant attention to, waiting continually upon, persevering. If you're taking notes down, um, you want to write this down, or if you're using the app, you can hit that little note section, put this in. Look up Luke 18. It talks about the persistent widow. It's a great story about how we're to be persistent in the area of prayer. Another passage that comes along here is pray without ceasing. We are to be devoted in prayer. Secondly, we are to be thankful in our prayers. Paul emphasizes thankfulness multiple times in this letter. And we've gone through this. But I want to do it again because it's so important to look back at this book and see as we review what is being talked about. Colossians 1, verse number 3 says, we always thank God. And then he goes on to verse 12 and he says, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints of light. And then we go over to chapter 2 and verse 7. It says, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. And then last week, I know the last two weeks, Brad has spent some time on this in chapter 3, verses number 15, 16, and 17. It says, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body. And then he says this, and be thankful. Verse 16, that the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. How? With thanksgiving in your heart to God. Verse 17, And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to the God, the Father, through him. And then again here in chapter 4, verse 2, verse two continue steadfastly in prayer. One little book. Paul's writing this letter to the Colossian church uh, in prison. And he's just penning these things down so they could be sent, this letter can be sent to them. And he's telling them how important thankfulness is in their life. Thankfulness, gratitude is the central issue so we know what God is doing in our life. We need to be thankful in our prayers. Our lives should be overflowing with thanksgiving. It means to, to be thankful that number one, God hears our prayers, and then number two, that he answers our prayers. Sometimes we just want him to answer them, don't we? We should just pause and be thankful that he hears us. He is, I, I, listen, sometimes, I, I, here's my, this is my prayer. God, it's me again. And we just talk. I, I, sometimes it's, it's deep and spiritual. Other times it's just like, you know, what I call flare prayers. Hey, God, need your help? 
Every decision to make need wisdom, need insight. Other times, man, it's, it's, it's bathed in a lot of time, and it, it's different positions of, of praying to God about that. But he just wants us to talk to him. We should focus our prayers on making an impact in our world. Not only do we are to be devoted to prayer and thankful in our prayers, we are to ask God to open doors for the gospel. My grandmother, grandmother taught me this years and years and years and years ago. She said, Kevin, never pray for patience. <laughs> Ever heard that? Ever been there? The same principle applies here. If you don't want open doors, don't pray for them. If you want open doors, pray for them. In this passage, we are to ask God to open doors for the gospel. I will guarantee you that if you pray for open doors, God will provide those. Now, here's my question. Are you ready to walk through them? All these new opportunities, a new school year, new sports teams, new jobs, new opportunities. There's doors we can walk through. Not only should we be devoted to prayer, thankful in our prayers, and ask God to open doors for the gospel, but we are to ask God what we should say. The number one reason that most people do not share the gospel with their friends, with their family, is they don't know what to say. I understand that. It's difficult. This verse tells us that we ask God to open doors. It says he will make it clear what we are to speak. This past week, I, uh, I saw something on Facebook. And it was a, I wouldn't call this a, a person a friend of mine. I would call, call him a casual friend, acquaintance. I mean, we're, we know each other from the soccer community. Um, I'm, I'm at the age now where the people I coached when they were kids are now coaching, and that's where he's at. And so I saw something out there, and, and he was having a very difficult health challenge. Um, I mean, his temperature was like in the 100, 203 range, COVID-like symptoms, uh, pneumonia-like symptoms, just really, really bad. And so I just paused, saw him face, I just paused and prayed. And then I was, I was sitting there, and then I got this Holy Spirit nudge <laughs> that he's like, hey, why don't you write them? I was like, man, busy, come on. <laughs> so I just wrote them, and I just said, hey, um, I want you to know I saw your post. I hope you're feeling better. I took a moment to pray for you. Uh, you know, I hope, hope it gets more updates. Just, you know, kind of like that. Didn't think a whole lot of it. Now, I want you to know that I, all my notes were in on, on, on Thursday. This is not some concocted illustration, okay, to fit here. This was all in already on Thursday. And I, and I, and I wrote this on, on Wednesday night. Friday morning at 7.53. Hey, Kevin. I just want to let you know that I am not a very religious person myself. But the fact that you took time out of your day to pray for me really means a lot to me and brought me to tears. We are just two people who met at a soccer field, and usually refs and players don't get along so well. Right? That's how we met. I can't express enough how grateful I am to have somebody like you reach out to me and say something like that. I really feel supported. My fever broke shortly afterwards, and I've been under 100 for most of the past day and a half. I got diagnosed, was given antibiotics, was able to eat real food for the first time in days, and I'm beginning to heal. Thank you for such a kind and selfless gesture. All because I responded to something on Facebook. So may I remind us, Facebook can be used for good, okay? <laughs> Other things just keep scrolling, okay? Just keep scrolling on the whole thing. But just a simple thing, a relational response to somebody, that you're praying for them. I didn't know what to really say. I'll be honest with you, if I would have seen them on the soccer field, I probably wouldn't have said the same words that I did behind the screen because we wouldn't have that opportunity. But it, it, it presented itself and just took it. And I don't know where it's going to lead. We'll see. I'll keep you up to date in time. Before we move on to a second way that we are an impact the world, I read a quote years and years ago that has impacted me, and I'll be honest with you, um, I Google this quote a lot just to reread it. And if you've never read this quote or seen this quote, I want to give you the opportunity to see it. And this was by an old man named Charles Spurgeon from back in the 1800s, and here's what he said. If sinners be damned, at least let them leap to hell over our dead bodies. And if they perish, let them perish with our arms wrapped around their knees imploring them to stay. 
If hell must be filled, let it be filled in the teeth of our exertions and let no one go unwarned and unprayed for. Wow. Oh, that we would have the same passion as Charles Spurgeon did. Oh, that we would live our life in such a way that that's how we would feel. If sinners be damned, at least let them leap over our dead bodies. If they perish, let our arms be around their knees. Let no one go unwarned or unprayed for. Solid Rock, you can impact the world for Jesus with your prayers. Secondly, we can impact our world for Jesus with our conduct. Colossians 4, verse 5 says, Walk in wisdom toward outsiders, making the best use of the time. How we conduct ourselves has a huge impact on our ability to reach people for Christ. Does it? Does it? It's, it's amazing the way that we conduct ourselves. I want to say this to our church family. I want to say this to all of us as individuals. Um, not everybody in the world is kind. Did you notice that? Did you ever notice that sometimes in church everybody's not kind? Okay? Everybody who names the name of Christ isn't kind. Here's what I'm going to ask you to do for those of us who are trying to make an impact on this community and this world. Just don't say anything. Just be quiet. I learned years ago, if you have nothing good to say, if you have nothing positive to say, if you don't have a heart of compassion, then, then just don't say anything. Because some individuals have been working on other people for years. Years. And you can come along and in one sentence, knock it all down. Because they put the term Christian and Christian together and they go, well, they must all be alike. Our conduct is important. We don't have to be perfect to be effective, but our lives should reflect who we serve every day. My grandmother also taught me this phrase. Your life might be the only Bible that some people read. I'm not saying this is an excuse to not communicate the gospel, but lifestyle evangelism is very, very important as well, how we conduct ourselves. I want to share a passage of Scripture that I know all of us know, if not all of us, most of us know, but we don't always choose to practice both sides of this. Matthew 22, verse 37, and he said to them, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. We love that part, don't we? Oh man, we're good at that one. Oh, and then it continues on. And a second is like it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Our conduct is so important. Last week, Brad talked about our homes, marriages, and parenting, and relationships. A life principle that Debbie and I have tried to live with with our own kids is this statement. What we do in moderation, our kids will practice in excess. Now, I'm going to take where our minds typically go, but that's not where I'm going. Here's where we typically go with that. We typically go, okay, well, if my language, if I use certain language in the home, and I don't mean all, not just foul language, but just language is negative. If we practice that in moderation, our kids are going to do that in excess. It's the fact. It's how it, how it works. Substances, alcohol, etc. If we practice in moderation, typically our kids will practice in excess. Let me give a practical one. Phone usage. What we practice in moderation, our kids are going to do in excess. But that's not where I want to go with this, because that's where we, where we typically go. I want to look at the positive side of this. What we practice in moderation, our kids will do in excess. What about living a life that's pleasing to God? If we do that in moderation, wouldn't it be awesome if our kids practice that in excess? If our kids saw us in conversational evangelism, in relational evangelism, if we're doing that in moderation, wouldn't it be great to see our kids doing that in excess? What about serving? If our kids see us serving Christ, be amazing how they could do that in excess. What we do in moderation, our children will do in excess. Third, not only can we impact the world through our prayers and our conduct, but we can impact the world through our speech. Colossians 4, 6 says, let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. See, our speech should be life-giving. The things we say to others should be life-giving to other people. The way we speak, both what we say and how we say it, can be a blessing or a curse to other people, especially when it comes to impacting this world for Christ. 
It says it should be seasoned with salt. See, salt just adds a little bit to it. It adds some flavor to it. I'll never forget when we were teenagers, we had a kid in our, in our, in our church. His name was Bobby. And Bobby was a prankster. And every time we would go to, out to a restaurant, this is, this is in the days where uh, they had the, the turn on, you know, uh, salt and pepper shakers. And he would always, always, I don't care where we were at, before we left, he had the, you know, that little thing that's sitting there with the, with the jellies and all that kind of stuff. He had to undo the salt shaker just so the next person would experience, you know, the tumultuous pour of salt, okay? <laughs> always. That, that was just him, okay? And, and so sometimes we would, we would just go, Bobby, and we would go screw it on together. Other times we weren't. But it was just his way. Of, now, we never knew what happened because we were, we're not going to stick around, you know, doing that. But I'll never forget, we were out to eat one time with Bobby, and Bobby had, and I'll never forget, it was, the, it was an enormous burger. Amy, cheddar cheese, mushrooms, bacon, crispy onions. I'll never forget it. And Bobby was going to put some salt on it. <laughs> Bobby reached for the salt shaker, and you know the end of the story, man. He just popped it on there. You know what Bobby never did again? <laughs> never. Never, ever, ever did it again. Because you know what? Too much salt is not good for us, but a little bit seasons it. It becomes good. That's what our speech should be like. We should use our speech to build others up, not to tear other people down. I love this passage in Proverbs 16, 24. Gracious words are like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and health to the body. That's what our words should be like. Our speech should also be relational. I love this passage out of 1 Peter 3, 15, and most of you know I love the message as a paraphrase in my study, and it says this, be ready to speak up and tell anyone who asks you why you're living the way you are and always with the utmost courtesy. I love that. We can impact the world with our speech. Sometimes we can impact the world with our speech by not saying anything. Just keep our mouth closed. Another one of my life mantras is this. It's better to, appear as, to keep your mouth shut and appear as a fool than to open it up and remove all doubt. <laughs> Sometimes just, just be quiet. Hey, hey, on Facebook, do you know you can continue to scroll? You don't got to comment? You can just you can scroll. Don't got to comment. Don't got to stir the pot. Just keep scrolling. You don't got to say anything. Let your speech be seasoned with salt. We can impact the world with our prayers, our conduct, and our speech. This brings us to our aha moment. And I've loved our sunset. I've loved this entire stage. I'm not looking forward to this thing coming down at all. I love, I love the set. But this is kind of what we've had for it. But I want to change it up a little bit today because we're talking about impacting the world. And so this is our aha moment today, all right? It's that world. Think about your world. Think about your circles of influence. Think about the impact that you're making on those within your circle of influence of any given day, any given week, any given month. And here's our aha moment. I can impact the world for Christ. We can. So what's our action steps today? What's our takeaways? What, what can we do to implement this in our lives today? Number one, commit to impact your world through prayers. Just make a commitment to do that. Now, I, I, I've got I've to say this. There's two kind of prayers here. The first one is this. If you're here today, live or watching, and you have not put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ yet, that's going to be your first prayer. The first is going to be the prayer of salvation. The first is going to come to Christ and say, you know what? I understand what you've done for me on the cross. I want to put my faith and trust in you. I believe in you. Would you please come into my heart because I want to spend eternity in heaven with you. That's your first prayer. If you've not done that before, I'd love to talk to you today. Jack would love to talk to you today. Somebody here would love to talk to you today about how do you put your faith and trust in Christ? How do you get over that line of faith and make a commitment to become his? That's your first prayer. But for the rest of us here, your prayer should be what we sang about a little bit ago is I surrender all. Do, do we just sing that song or do we really mean it? Do we surrender to him? The second Action step is to commit to impact your world through your conduct. And the third is to commit to impact your world through your speech. Solid Rock, you are an impact player for the kingdom of God. It's the bottom of the ninth. You're up. There's a runner on second. You're going to step up to the plate. What are you going to do? Let's impact the world for Jesus Christ this year. Father, thank you so much for the word of God. Thank you so much that uh, you were an impact player and you want us to be an impact player as well for the kingdom. Thank you for setting the example of what it means to be sold out, to be committed. 
to do what the Father asks. And Father, I ask today that you would help us as we just take a moment to reflect here in a moment about our life of where we're at, Lord. We want to impact our circles of influence, especially this upcoming school year. There's so many opportunities you're going to bring our way, and Father, may we be willing to walk through those doors knowing you're going to give us the words to say. Lord, thank you so much for our church family. We thank you so much for all the great things happening here, and we look forward to having more things happen because of the impact we as a church are able to have on this community in this world. In your name I pray. Amen. Please stand as we respond in worship. Praise God for his grace and his power, for his Holy Spirit that's with us. That as we stand and attempt to be that impact person, we don't do it in our own strength, we don't do it in our own power, but it's the power of Christ in us that's transforming us, that has saved us and sanctified us, and that will draw other men unto himself. And so as we make ourselves available, as we step up, we just invite the Holy Spirit to work in our lives. And trust him to give us the peace, to give us the words and the wisdom. So as we sing here, we just reflect upon that truth, yet not I, but Christ in me. What gift of grace is Jesus my redeemer? There is no more for heaven now. Righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus. For my life is holy. Jesus now. 
Amen. Please go in the power and the strength of Christ. May he live in you, dwell in you, and speak through you to your neighbors, to your loved ones, to your families. Go be that impact player for the gospel.